Hey guys, welcome back. Another line boring video. So we got a horizontal bore on a cat 637 hitch. We've already done the other holes. This one had a strap through it, so it's got some marks, some grease marks on it, but we've already done those. I saved the, the best one for you guys. Let's see the, so this is the bushing that goes in there. You got one there, and then you get one here. Well, it came apart, and that pin rode right there and made a nice little oval in there. So we'll get that all cleaned up. This face is all messed up here as well. And then on this side, we get these steel bushings here. Get one there, get one there. And you can see this face is also messed up. I'm waiting on some measurements here because I'm not sure if this side supposed to look like that yet, but we will uh, find out when our uh, cat guy gets back to us. Everything else looks pretty good. You can see like chamfer marks and stuff. So it's still pretty, pretty close. So, all right, let's get, uh, get all this cleaned up here and then uh, get the bar dialed in, get going. Now you can kind of see a little better, like exactly where that pin was writing, right there. These ones aren't really that bad. Oh, see, that might be a crack. We'll have to inspect that. So one thing you do when you set up is you can see the wore out spot right there. I try to straddle it like that. It'll give it more accurate and get you a lot closer on your cones. So you have less adjustment to do when your bearings get welded on.
All right, we got the bar centered. It was off just a tiny bit on this side. Just had to move it up just a tiny bit. So bar centered, we are gonna add another spider bearing right here because the span in between the two bearings is too far. So we'll add that bearing there to help stiffen up the center of that bar there. Here comes trouble. All right, we got it set up to do our clean cuts. We're gonna cut that bore till it's round. We'll cut the uh, that oval shape out of it. Okay, so we added another bearing here. There's just a little bit too much chatter. It, that helped a lot. And we have just a little bit right here. So I'm just gonna weld that by hand real quick. And then we'll, uh, we'll cut it and then we'll bore weld it. And now we can see, now that it's clean, you can see our two grease holes here. So we'll have to clean those out before we bore weld it so the grease doesn't drop into the weld. All right, so we're gonna weld that by hand and then cut it.
All right, so we got this all welded out here. Um, the grease holes, probably gonna wanna know about those. I just welded over them. These are in a super easy spot, so we'll just run a drill in there. Um, super simple for that. So this is really hot. We're gonna let that cool down before we start cutting on it. So we're gonna do our clean cuts on here and then uh, get these bores welded up. Everything was going so smoothly until no more wire. It always happens on the last stretch. Okay, and we got all the, the bore welding itself done. See, we ran out of wire, and then we put a new spool in. It started acting kind of funny. We had a wire flip issue. Um, just kind of one of those things that happens sometimes. It's, it's yeah, it's just a pain, a pain in the butt to deal with. So, just touch it up a couple times, or a couple spots right here with uh, by hand. This spot right here is a relief for a retaining like a big washer that holds the pin in here so this particular lip right here doesn't need any um, welding or machining this face is about a 16th off so we're gonna build that up and then we're gonna face that and then also we are going to build up this face and face this but this right here is the correct face so it only wore kind of up in here so we're just you know weld up there and then use a facing tool on this and then we will do what's called step facing on this because my facing tool will not fit in there <clears throat> all right so we'll get these touched up and then we'll uh start welding faces All right, so we got this face kind of welded up. So the only thing that really matters is kind of right in here, basically here to here. This face is good. So we're trying to retain that without welding on it, if possible, because this brass piece sits like this. You know, there's one on each side. So this face of this only kind of sits about right there 
So we're gonna try to step face right here and then see kind of what that looks like. We may not need to use the actual facing tool. Um, got this side welded up, hit the high spots of the Cubitron. It'll make it uh, a little faster to step face it. All right, I'll get the bar in there and we're gonna start with this side because I think this side might be more difficult. So we'll start with that and uh, see what happens. All right, so I, I record all these videos on my iPhone and was having a storage issue. So I lost some footage there. So basically we um, faced right here and uh, we're gonna take the Cubitron and just kind of hit the high spot on here a little bit so I can get a better measurement just to kind of see where we're standing and clean that up a little bit. And then we're gonna see what it looks like. And we're also gonna Kind of hit this outside edge so i can get a an accurate measurement so all right hopefully no more memory issues All right, stupid phone cut out again, trying to get it figured out. So um, well, basically what we did, we just kind of kissed it with the Cubitron. We got it, got it flush, went over it with scotch Bright pad. We measured it with the calipers, our face-to-face -face here. And I mean, we're exactly dead on the money. So we're gonna leave that, put a straight edge across it, a whole bunch of different ways and it's extremely close. A little bit of weld on the inside. I welded that up a little bit right there where there's some porosity. So we'll get that all cleaned up. All right, well, stick the bar in it and uh, do our final cut on the inside. It's upside down, but 6.38 is what we want. Good to go. Okay, common question is how do I measure tool height or adjust tool for cutting? This is what I use. Basically you zero it to the bar. That, move it up to the highest point of the tool and that will give you your stick out, do a little bit of math and then you know exactly what your stick out is supposed to be. This particular uh, situation, stick out is supposed to be exactly one inch, 1.00. So we'll adjust it to that. You can see how pretty easy this is. in here. Thanks. 
that, tighten it, and yep. A lot of times when you tighten it, it moves like that. So you just break it free just barely and then just kind of redo it. Of course, it's going to give me that. Boom. Right there. Oh. Yeah, it's bouncing around back there. All right, we're good. So, exactly one inch. Uh, send that through and she'll be good to go funny little fact about this particular 637 hitch all of the bushings on all of the bores have the same same outside diameter size so all of the cuts were one inch stick out from the bar so that was kind of interesting everything from brass to steel to two different type of steel bushings are all it's all one inch all right let's get this cutting this is what we're using for our finish cut. They work pretty good. I have not found an insert that I'm like super, super impressed with as far as, oh my gosh, this one works a hundred times better than everything else. They're all fairly decent, except for the super, super cheap ones on Amazon. Those ones do break pretty easy with the interrupted cuts, but anything that's kind of higher quality I just really haven't seen anything that uh, makes a giant difference. So I would just say any anything that's, you know, not super cheap would probably work fine if you're uh, curious about that. All right, let's get this cutting here. Okay, we got this side. Still have to drill our holes and then just give it a light little buffing with a flapper wheel. So now we're gonna move on to this side. Um, do this one first, should be pretty straightforward. A couple cuts, chamfer, done. And then, like I said, we'll be step facing on that. So, all right, let's get to cutting. And I'm sure some of you might want to know what these are for. So this is just tacked on by the customer. And that is when this thing is standing upright like that. Basically those are feet so that it can stand upright and they can work on it. Otherwise, you know, it couldn't stand up just by sitting on those. So that's just there temporarily so that they can work on it and do everything they need to do. And it's also a little easier to transport it that way. All right. On to this side. Okay, so we did a cut on both those about ten thousandths away from our target depth. And you can see Got a couple low spots right there where it was doing the wire flip. And then this edge is just a hair low right here. So we're gonna pull the bar out, throw a little bit of weld on that, and then uh, come back and cut it again.
All right, so that last little bit, just kind of a cosmetic thing. I just wanted to see if I could clean that edge up a little bit. Worked pretty good. Um, step facing worked really well, right on target. We'll just smooth that out with a scotch bright pad on the grinder. So now we are gonna take our final inside cuts. I never take the final cut on the inside until like the very last thing, just in case you gotta weld some more or something has to happen. You always save that very last final cut for the very, very last thing. So, all right, final cut. All right, so we got her all cut, chamfered. All right, we're gonna take all these bearings off here and just kind of do a little bit of clean up on it and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, we got everything taken off, cleaned up a little bit. So the only thing left to do drill out our grease holes then we'll run a tap in there just to make sure there's no dingleberries in the threads and they're all good to go okay so drill these holes Perfect, all right. There we go. Smooth out the little burr on the inside. Good to go. All right. So the customer's gonna deal with paint. 
because we got all these H links down here as well that got done. So they're gonna assemble the whole thing and then paint it all at once. They don't wanna get it painted and then scratch the paint as they assemble it. So they're gonna take care of the paint and that is it, it for this project. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.